You think that you're dealing with maybe a covert narcissist in your business? I have been there the worst. So in this video, I am going to be going through the seven ways that you can spot a covert narcissist in your business, at work, or wherever it is that you're dealing with one during the day. You definitely don't want to miss this. Hi, I'm Rebecca Song. I am an attorney. I'm also a globally recognized narcissist negotiation expert. I spent all day helping you get out from under the slog, the nausea, nausea, the headaches, the feeling, that elephant on your chest. I know what it feels like. The paralysis of dealing with that narcissist, the paranoia, the covert narcissist, the worst. Believe me, I know. First thing that you are dealing with when you're dealing with a covert narcissist is that mm, everybody thinks that they're so nice, so nice. They are the best at everybody thinking that they are so wonderful. Even you at the beginning thought that they were so wonderful. They were probably your best friend at the beginning. I had it too. Believe me. So, oh, by the way, I release brand new content every single day, new videos. I even go live. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, because I want to make sure that you can become empowered, strong, stand in your power, feel free, free your spirit. So time to live in that power. And by the way, I have a free ebook for you on doing exactly that. And you can go to winmynegotiation.com and grab that. Winmynegotiation.com, get your free ebook, 15 pages, so that you can start feeling empowered. All right. So, so nice, so kind, so wonderful. Everybody thinks that they are wonderful. They come, they befriend you. They are your best friend. Everybody thinks that they are wonderful. They ingratiate themselves within everyone. But you know, they're kind of like in everyone's business. They sort of find themselves everywhere they need to be. That's sort of how they are. They just sort of really in touch with everything that's going on, especially if it's a company. They see where the best synergies are. They see where they can collapse. And, and they are really, really great for that idealization phase. You know, they want, they look for those opportunities to attach themselves to the right people. They're excellent opportunists and they're, they're kind of like meerkats. You know, they're always looking around for that best opportunity and where they can attach themselves to that best person to make themselves look the best. You know, where can they look the most significant and be seen and, and, and be valued the most, right? And they want to be in that, that spot, that spotlight. If they attach themselves to you, are that person at that moment, you know, so whether it's a business partnership or if you're at work or whatever it is, it's because they have decided that mm, you're the one that should be attached to in that moment. And so if that's the case, then, you know, you're going to be a good one for them. But if all of that aligns and that's fantastic at the beginning, but once they attach themselves to you. So that's number one. Then you start to find, well, number two, they end up not following through on the things that they're supposed to be doing, say that they're going to do things. They end up not doing them. So number two is that they're very, very passive aggressive. Assign themselves or you assign them cer certain things to do. Where is it? You, you are kind of confused by it because they seem like they're going to be an amazing 
partner or somebody to be working with and it's not happening and they always have some sort of excuse for it or or they just don't respond to you at all but you know they've always got some sort of family issues some sort of family emergency some sort of something going on and and you start to feel during this time that underlying sort of competition coming on now you're starting to feel that and you're starting to feel that they're sort of triangulating, right? So number three is that's when you're starting to feel that sort of competition going on. That's where you're starting to feel where there's, they treat you a little bit like they are superior to you and you are inferior. Little digs, little subtle digs, little subtle devaluing, where, you know, they kind of forget things about you on purpose, things that you know that they knew about you. They kind of put themselves in superior positions. If there's an opportunity, all of a sudden they left you off of it. Oh, inadvertently. Uh, they might have inadvertently left you off of emails for meetings, for information about clients. You know, all of a sudden things are starting to happen. And when you question them about it, they are, what? What are you talking about? You know, they don't own up to it because, you know, everybody still thinks that they're so wonderful, so nice. And they even say things to you like how much they think of you. It's confusing because the way they're acting is different than the way they conduct themselves. And so you're you're starting to feel confused about this underlying thing that's happening, you know, the passive aggressive behavior, this underlying competition, things that they're forgetting, and the way they they still seem like they're your friend or they still seem like they're supposed to be sort of on your side. Then the next thing is they start setting themselves up as sort of the they're friends with all sorts of other people and that they have stronger sort of relationships with other people they still they start setting themselves up as they are the go-to person they are the go-to person within the relationship with you so that you are kind of the secondary person in the relationship and because they want people to sort of see that you are now kind of wronging them in some way, that you are now sort of the, the bad person. They want to sort of set themselves up as kind of the victim of you if anything ever happens. They want to make sure that they've kind of got these third parties align, aligned with them. And they want to make sure that you know that these third parties are aligned, you know, so they'll kind of drop it in that how close they are to this person or that person, especially if this person or that person is superior to you, somebody that you look up to, somebody that is perceived to be higher up on the food chain in some way, more famous, more influenced. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be even within the same company, but they want to make sure that whoever this person is, it's whether it's the illusion of influence or, or whatever it is that you know that they know or whatever it is, that there's this perceived feeling that if there was ever a fracture between you and them, that they're going to be absorbed into the higher level of society as they see it, and you're going to be left out in the cold. That's what they kind of want to make sure that you feel. Um, that's the next one. The next one is you start to see some maybe even potential situations where they start treating you almost as a subordinate. Now they're starting to give you tasks to do where you are kind of becoming where you're 
doing things for them. They might even say things to you in public or in front of others that make people think that you're their subordinate in some way. They might put something out on social media or something that kind of makes people believe this, even if it's not true, or they treat you like this in some way. If this is resonating with you in any way, I'd love to know that you've seen it or put just put totally in the comments or put I've seen it in the comments or something that you guys have seen so far. Because I know for me, it was very similar to this. And I know for me, I even started to see some unethical behavior at this point. I was taken aback. And if you actually say something to them at this point about behavior that is, you know, potentially unethical or not above board, or you try to call them out on whatever it is that they're doing, they are really, they turn it around like, It is such a huge, oh my gosh, I can't believe you would question me. Then they become the victim. They reverse it so that they become the victim and you are now comforting them. The next thing is that they will pretend like you didn't know, they didn't know that you were trying to either take time off or that you were trying to not be scheduled on a certain day or do something like that, you know, they'll they'll start to try to uh, sabotage you. So they might even like tell clients or people like that, that, oh, they don't know where you are, you know, make it seem like you just didn't show up or make you come in on those days, make you work on those days, that sort of thing. The next thing is that if something good happens with you, and this is the last one, number seven, is that they will absolutely not be happy for you whatsoever. I mean, they'll be like, oh, great for you. Thank you. Well, congratulations. I mean, they'll try to muster it, you know, if they're trying to still hide it. But, you know, you can, you'll be able to start to tell that they're not actually happy. And by the way, you know, this is still, you know, all if they're still with you, still working with you. But I just want to add sort of like a PS to this. If you decide that you're no longer for them and now you're against them or now you're actually pulling away and they know it, this is when gloves off, mask off when it comes to a covert narcissist. This is when they just absolutely go insane. You know, removing your access, doing things. This is when you start to see a side of them where you think, oh, what happened to the nice one? Wow. They'll start sending you really nasty emails, being just absolutely horrible. And you think, wow, I didn't even know you had it in you to be like this. And All you're trying to do is actually maybe try to have a cordial end. You try to extend an olive branch. You're trying to be nice, trying to wrap things up in a good way. They will not be able to do that. I'll tell you that right now. And by this time, you will have had all the energy sucked out of you. You will be a shell of yourself having dealt with them. And you'll just be, I got to get out of this thing. So believe me, I know I've been there, I've been exactly where you are, and I can just tell you that the best thing for you is going to be putting those boundaries in place, not talking to anybody, not talking to any of their flying monkeys either. I mean, because they try to, you know, put themselves in this place of a puppet puppet master or whatever. And I can tell you that the other people around them don't see what's going on. And it's just not going to be helpful for you to try to remain in contact with them or the other people in their world. It's better for you to try to cut ties with as many people that are close to that narcissist as possible too, for your own sake, your own sanity, your own soul. Believe me, what I suggest is you make sure that you have a good support 
support system around you. You know, I have a Facebook group, Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zong. Do that. If you need therapy, if you need access to therapy, betterhelp.com forward slash Rebecca Zung is a sponsor we have on this channel. We receive commissions. You don't pay one single dollar extra. Same class for you. I just want you to have access to help and support that you can trust that's been vetted. Make sure you subscribe here. Subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell. You want access to free resources. The next video that I want you to watch is ridiculous lines narcissists use when they're triangulating. You know why? Because narcissists, uh, covert narcissists are the best at triangulating. They are stealth. They are great at it. So that'll be a really good video for you to watch so that you can be aware of the types of lines that they're using when they're triangulating. I'm Rebecca Zung. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for showing up for yourself. And remember that today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. And I will see you in that next video.